What's up, Facebook Live? Nice to see you all. I don't know if that's the place for this. Hopefully you are having an amazing morning, day, afternoon, evening, whenever and wherever you're watching this. Hopefully it is wonderful and getting better by the moment. Um, as you're tuning in, I'd love to know number one, where you're tuning in from. Number two, I'd love to know three things you're grateful for out there in the world today. Um, and today's conversation is the difference between uh, the dream team of working within a group of people or the lone ranger, doing it all by yourself. So we're gonna talk a little bit uh, about what is the difference, whoa, uh, what is the difference between those two and what kind of results each one of them produces in the world. Um, so as you're tuning in, again, I'd love to know, number one, where you're tuning in from. Number two, I'd love to know three things you're grateful for. Feel free to put it right over there in the comment section. Stuart Allison, nice to see you, sir. Welcome. Uh, I saw a few more people pop up. I don't know where it flashed in. It disappeared. Uh, anyways, welcome, welcome, welcome. There, there's an interesting stat uh, from a new book I'm reading. It talked about when a certain type of, uh, I guess it's a lightning bug, was trying to attract a mate, uh, there, there was really two ways they could do it. Number one, they can kind of be a lone ranger and they can do it by themselves. So you imagine you're outside, it's a summer night, it's beautiful outside, and, and you've got you know this little lightning bug that keeps kind of lighting up, just trying to, get, trying to get its mate attention, trying to see if it can track down uh, someone of its species to connect with and hopefully make some more little fire bugs. And, and then there's the story where this gentleman was traveling and he, all of a sudden he's going down this river and along the river he sees this giant, like the whole mangrove bush just lights up all at once. So instead of this little tiny light, he sees the whole forest like light up, light up light up and he's going, whoa, that's amazing. And he's trying to figure out like, where the heck is all this light coming from? And, and what's crazy about that is it's a bazillion little fireflies all together, just all lighting up at the same time. And he's like, wow, that's amazing. It's like, how do they sync up? How does this happen? How does it do it all together at the same time? This is incredible. Yeah, it's been nice to see you. And, and, and so what, what's wild, they did a bunch of research around this and they figured out that when the lightning bugs light up by themselves, they've got about a 3% chance of attracting a mate. But when these lightning bugs light up together as an entire group, it jumps up 79% and all of a sudden they have an 82% chance of finding and attracting a mate when they're all lighting up together. And so what's wild is it goes to the philosophy which is in the concept that we've been taught as a society, do you believe that when you go into a, um, let's say a competition, when you go into work, when you go into the marketplace, when you go into school, when you go into a, a place where you're gonna be judged on your performance, do you believe it's better to go alone like that single little lightning bug, or do you believe it's better to go together? And, and that's kind of the first question. So I'm, I'm gonna propose it and toss it out there to all of you watching right now. Uh, number one, when you go into some type of competition, meaning competing in the marketplace in order to win the business and, and conquer you know, in, in what it is that you do as far as your business is concerned, when you, if you're in school, if you're a student, when you go in the class and you're studying for a big exam, how do you currently approach it? Do you do it by yourself? Do you clear everyone out and say, watch out, I'm gonna do this, move out of the way? Or, or do you immediately team up with people? Um, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, when you start your business, do you immediately look for partners and how you can come together and work together? Or do you just clear everyone out and do it yourself? And, you know, so, so number one is you're a lone ranger, you do it by yourself. Number two is your you're the dream team, meaning you always first look for a community or a group to do it together with. And I'll be honest, personally, I'm, I'm kind of a number one. I'm, I'm a lone ranger. When I start something, I tend to move everything out of the way and then go into doing it myself. 
and, and so far in, in the paths that I've chosen as far as career paths, it's worked very well. In school, it worked really well. In sports, it's worked very well. Um, bodybuilding, lifting, all the things. I've always chosen things I, could, I can control on my own and I could be the difference maker. Um, my wife, on the other hand, she is phenomenal at number two. When she starts anything, and she's probably started one, two, three, at least three other businesses in the past probably two years. And every time she does it, she immediately finds a partner. And, and what's interesting is she doesn't go out and find the best person in the world who does whatever it is she's trying to do. Who she finds is the best teammate, the best fit, where she compliments them and they compliment her in their skill sets and what it is that they're focusing on. Whatever type of project they're working on, she finds someone that complements the skill sets and magnifies that when she works with them, it magnifies what they're great at, and when they work it with her, it magnifies what she's good at. She immediately does that, and all of her projects tend to go very smooth, tend to go very well, and eventually get into a place where literally it just keeps going without her being there. Like she has a few businesses that she's set up, she's built with teams, she steps away, and she just checks her email every day to see how it's going. She maybe spends a few hours a week running ads or setting stuff up, and then literally it's leveraged cash flow where the transactions happen, the orders are taken, they're passed on to somebody, they're sent out to the customer, she gets great reviews online, and literally she just checks and goes, hey look, we sold 10 more things yesterday, cool, high five. And I'm like, how do you do that? It takes so much more effort on my end to get this stuff going, and she seems to do it so smooth and easy. And it goes back to this concept with the lightning bugs, where they figured out that when a little lightning bug lights up all by themselves, they have about a 3% chance of attracting a mate or being successful at what they're trying to do. Versus when they all team up together and all of them start lighting up at once, all of a sudden it jumps up 79% and they have an 82% likelihood of attracting the mate they're looking for because they're working together. Now, it's not because one of them is the brightest little shiner of, of them all. It's because all of them pair up, get in synchronicity, and are able to literally all work together to create the result they want. So, so a couple things that are really interesting. I saw a handful of people in the comment. Uh, Consetta, nice to see you. Chelsea, welcome. Nice to see you. And I, I saw a handful of people that are, that are kind of similar to me, which is we're a lone ranger. We're number one. And, and so big question, what would you have to believe? What would you have to be certain about to be able to go team up with someone else? And this is an interesting question. So I'd love to know, what would you have to believe about the situation, the service, the business, the opportunity, the person? What would you have to believe in order to be excited to go team up with someone to magnify what it is you're doing. What would you have to know? You know, what would you have to have total certainty about? And I'll, I'll see if I can point out a mistake I immediately made when I asked this question. So what would you have to be totally certain about if you were gonna go attract a partner? Let's see, Sonia, Sonia said somebody that would have the same vision as me. Okay, so you need the same vision. What else would you have to be totally certain about? Meaning if you went out and found a partner, you would have to have total certainty in, in, in this piece. Yeah. So you'd have to, you have to be certain they have the same vision as you? No, no, hold on one sec. P.S. If this topic, if you know someone who struggles that either they're a lone ranger or they're really good at the dream team and you know someone who needs to hear this, could you please click the share button for us? I'd love to get them on here so we can chat with them and get more feedback in this. Stuart says they need the same values and rules. That's important. Uh, you need to know their motivation. What's the motive behind what it is that they're doing? Very good, Catherine. I like that. So what would you need to know about them? I'll tell you my mistake. I said, if someone said, if you were going to team up with someone, what would you need to know about them? 
I, my, the first thing that clicked in my head is I would need to know that they're the absolute best at what they do. And what's funny is I go back to what we were talking about a few seconds ago. Catherine says work ethic, it's important. Um, now, now what's funny is to go back to what we were just talking about, I would look for the brightest shining little, little bug there and immediately try to go work with the brightest little bug in the bunch. Um, and, and what's funny, hold on, Alberto says, I would have to know 100% certainty on my own abilities. I would have to be prepared to expect the same from my partner, okay? Now, what's interesting, oh, here we go, uh, that they desire the end result that no matter what comes, they will communicate in an honest way. Very nice. So here's what you'd have to know in order to pick that partner and have certainty it's the right person. So my thing was I had to know that the absolute best at what they do. Chelsea says, someone who's willing to learn along the ride, someone who's always looking to improve, very cool. Catherine, can they do what I cannot do very well? Good one there. So this is interesting. So I look for someone who is the best at what they are doing, and what's funny is I look for the brightest little bug to pair up with, instead of looking for someone who's the best fit to offset what I'm not good at. To, so that their strength is my weakness and my strength is their weakness. And all of a sudden, we're the right fit. And when we're the right fit, all of a sudden, we have the ability to now magnify what it is we're doing together. So in entrepreneurial kind of space, uh, there's a really cool personality test um, called the Wealth Dynamics Profile. We talk about this in our Performance Coach University because a lot of our coaches land up coaching entrepreneurs. I coach tons of entrepreneurs. And, and, and so... It's a test you could take that tells you out of eight different personality types, which one is your primary and which one is your secondary. Now, once you know that, it gives you a little pattern that says, hey, go two over, circle that, go three over, circle that. Those are the teammates you need to team up with in your business to have your business flourish. And it's like, whoa, that makes sense. Now, what's fascinating is, uh, I just remember my primary one is a creator and who I need to team up with is a supporter. Let me see if I can find my test real quick. Um, I think it's on my laptop. Let me see if I type this in. Do, do, do. I'm just trying to see if I can find. Uh, no. No. Oh, I think this is it. I think I found it. Um, but so, Catherine, I love what you're saying here. Is can they do what you can't do very well? Are they naturally a great fit? in what it is you're trying to accomplish. Do their strengths offset your weaknesses? Um, now, I, I felt kind of silly after I read that because I was like, wait a minute, that's not what I was looking for. I wanted to know if they were the best at what they did. And, um, huh. So I can't seem to find, I can't find it. Uh, but, but what's fascinating is it's a great test. It shows you eight different personalities. It shows you exactly how to pair them up. So literally, your strengths are their weaknesses. Their weaknesses are your strengths, vice versa. And so that's one way. Now, the second question would be, how could you do that in, let's say, a partnership? And, and beyond, I'm not, I'm not talking about a business partnership. What, what about an intimate relationship? Wouldn't it be smart that, that when you're looking for someone, instead of finding, and, and, and see if this thought goes all the way through, instead of finding someone who's the, mo the one, the, the one that blows your mind, the best one you could ever find, versus finding someone who's the right team fit for your values, for your dreams, for your vision, for your beliefs, for what you love to do, for who you are, for going through shitty times together. And, and, you know, one of the things I tell people who are looking for a relationship, I always tell them, hey, 
Find someone that can go through the worst things in the world with you and still come out loving life together. Find that person. Because inevitably, life's going to throw some crazy, horrible situations at you. And if you find the person who enjoys going through all the chaos together, man, you can do anything. If you could do that and still love life, you could do everything and still love life together. But if you find someone who only loves the good stuff and gets frustrated and angry and pissed off and all this stuff during the bad stuff, you're going to have a bumpy ride when things get rough because inevitably it always does. Uh, I haven't met a person yet who everything's been smooth sailing their whole life. Um, so, so this concept of instead of finding the one, the brightest, shining little bug of the bunch, find the one that's the best fit for who you are. But then we got to figure out which qualities make them the best fit. How do you define what the best fit really is? Now, we had a few things before, values, um, work ethic. We had, uh, you know, their attitude. We had how they show up. So there's a list of things that qualify someone as the best fit, but everyone's gonna be different. So you might wanna take time and, and on a piece of paper, write down what makes someone the best fit in my perception. So as a business partner, what would make someone the best fit that I would need? As a intimate relationship partner, what would make someone the best fit for you know having a, a, a long-standing relationship together? Gracie, nice to see you. Um, for a, a friendship, what would make someone a best fit for a, a basketball, a workout buddy, a, a sports partner, for, uh, you know, whatever it is you're looking for, what would make someone a best fit? What personality traits would they need? What kind of ethics and morals and values? How would they have to show up and deliver? What are the things that would really truly qualify them in, in your eyes? And, and you would look at them and go, wow, they absolutely are the fit for me. So that's a simple message of the day. Going back to the beginning, the little lightning bugs, when they light up by themselves, they've got a 3% chance of being successful at finding a mate. When they light up all together in synchronicity, it jumps up and they have an 82% likelihood of finding that mate. And, and what's wild, it goes back to the concept of we're trained when we're young as trying to be the number one in our class, the best athlete on the team, the coveted person who gets the most important job. We're trained psychologically to always stand out from the crowd, to be better, to compete, to excel, to go above and beyond what everyone else is doing. Yet, that means we're trying to be the brightest bug in the bunch versus we're, we're not really trained. There's, there's some groups that are trained, you know, Navy SEALs, uh, special ops, these guys are trained that you have to work together in synchronicity in order to get the job done. And, and so what, what's wild is the concept of saying, wow, I need to retrain myself that it's not how bright I can shine by myself, it's how well we can get our whole group or community or team or organization to shine together. Now, what's interesting, uh, in this book I'm reading, it talks about you can become a positive node, which means if you're bringing such a bright light, meaning a positive attitude, a hard work ethic, ridiculously high standards, that you show up and bring your absolute best every single day, you can start to cause others around you to ignite to where all of a sudden it goes from just you to a couple to a little bit and they start to catch up and then all of a sudden you got the whole team going. So you can be a positive node and you can practice by lighting up those around you and causing them to light more and all of a sudden, yes, a light worker or someone who brings the, that positive energy, whether that's becoming the healthiest version of yourself, the happiest version of yourself, the most fulfilled version of yourself, the strongest version of yourself, but, but as you continue to get yourself to be the best version of who you could possibly be, you can become a node that starts to ignite those around you and get the whole crew going at the same time by how you show up. Uh, a few things that really help, well, I'm not to those chapters yet, uh, but one thing it talked about is being a prism of positivity or a pr prism of praise where you're constantly acknowledging the things that are going great in other people around you. You're constantly appreciating and building them up um, and, and causing them to feel strong and reinforcing them doing the things that bring everyone to light up together. Uh, there's other things you can do together um, as well. But, but it's the concept of first making this decision, and, and we'll stop here. Uh, the book is called, I think it's called Big Potential. It's in my phone, so I can't open it. Um, 
So the, the, but the, Chelsea, I think it's called Big Potential. It, it's the same gentleman who wrote The Happiness Advantage, uh, Sean Aker, new book. It, it's wonderful so far. And it, it's really interesting because it was making me think the way my wife immediately does business versus how I do business. I said, wow, there's some things I definitely need to learn from her and practice. And what's funny, when I look back at the biggest growth spaces in our company that we've ever had, it's always been when we successfully paired up with other great people that offset each other, that were a great team fit, and all of a sudden we have exponential growth. Like I remember I created my first online training program um, by myself, and I went and it, it took me, you know, a year, year and a half to get a thousand people into that program. Now what, what's wild is we just co-created a program with with. Sean Stevenson on sleep, Ben Greenfield on fitness and nutrition, Wim Hof on super performance, and myself. And, and so far, we have 915 students from 72 countries in the program in just three months. So literally, what took me a year and a half before took us three months this time. And you know, I, I, never, I didn't get anywhere near to 72 countries in the first program, and, and this one's easily all over the world that fast because we've teamed up with the right people that have allowed us to you know, make the right fit, which multiplies ourselves. And so instead of trying to be the brightest little bug out here, we team up together and we've all lit up and, and, and been able to expand greatly and, and reach a ton of people. Um, so just some thoughts on this. Catherine, I invited some of my friends to listen to this talk. Great talk. Oh, so, so welcome. Chelsea, love the program. Thank you. Um, but, but it went that much further, that much faster, just because we had the right people with the right fit and we all strengthened each other um, and we all had assets to bring to the table that allowed us to shine as a team much brighter than any one of us could shine by ourselves. Uh, just a simple, simple concept, but very powerful. Um, thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions, I can answer them real quick. If not, I'm gonna go take my wife on a date because it sounds like a good idea this afternoon. Let's see, any questions? I'm not seeing any questions, so thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for taking time to tune in today. Uh, actually, a little side note. This one's interesting. My wife and I were talking about this. Um, th th there's something that's going on in the world where, it, and, and it, it's, speci it's everybody, but specifically, um, there's, it, it's happening more in women, at least from my perception of where I can see it, where there's a judgment being made that if you're just a parent or just a business owner or just a mom or just a wife or just a single woman. It's not enough. And, it, and it's a weird little thing that's going on where, and, and, and you hear about this, where a, a woman starts, and I, I think I've told you guys this story before, where I remember I was sitting in the dorm room with my little cousin, she was a sophomore in college, and, and I asked all the ladies in the room, I said, hey, what if there was a young woman in this room who decided she was gonna become magna cum laude, straight A student, the best in this class, she was gonna graduate in four years, and after graduating with her degree from her major university, she was going to, she, her main goal was to get married, have be an amazing world-class wife, have beautiful children, and take care of her home. I said, would that, like, what do you guys think? I remember there was like 10, 12 girls in the room, and the girls went, ugh, what a waste. I mean, she should just drop out now if that's all she wants to do and, and make space for someone who's gonna use the degree. And I remember being like, oh my gosh, wow. And I remember just asking around the room, say, anyone else have anything different? And, and they all kept saying similar little iterations of that. And I remember thinking, wow, wow, that blows my mind. And, and I stepped back and thought about it. I said, what is more important on this planet than being a mom? Like raising a human being who's going to be the future of society and the world, I don't think there's really a more important job than that. And, and what's wild is I, I, I talk to moms and talk to people, and what's interesting is there's this weird thing going on 
where you watch, and, and, and if you, I have friends who are full-time moms, and a blogger, and a something else, and a something else. And, and you look at their profiles online, and, and for all of you who I watch and check this out, it's really interesting, because I, I see you hanging out with your beautiful little babies, taking them to dance classes, and taking them to the park, and having fun in the house and kitchen, and watching movies 57 times in a row with them. God bless your soul for the admiration and love you have for that child. <laughs> and, and I watch, and what's wild though, is there, there's this little inkling for some reason as if it's not enough. Meaning, you read the profile title and it says, here's my name and I'm, I'm a, a, a wife and a, and a mom. And instead of stopping there and saying, hey, I'm a world-class wife and a world-class mom. There's something about that at this stage of history that's not good enough. And, and so what's wild is it's like, and a blogger, and four businesses, and something else, and something else. And it's the most important role in the world. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're multi-passionate and have 27 other businesses you want to start on the side for kicks, that's awesome. But please, don't let anything interfere in the most important role that you have, the most important role of society as a whole, which is raising the next generation. Um, th there's something very strange that, that people are devaluing that. And, and, and when I say people, when I talk to a, a lot of guys, they're like, yeah, no, that's amazing. Like, like they seem to respect it, they seem to value it. But when I talk to women, they go, oh yeah, it's okay. Uh, but, it, but it's this thing where you're supposed to be a mom and a something, and a wife and a something. And, and for those of you out there, I don't know what this is worth, uh, but, but if you feel pressured to be a mom and a something, but your soul in, like your heart really says, hey, I just wanna be a mom, that's amazing. Good for you, I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm, I'm honored and humbled that you have the ability to do that, not everyone does. Like I said, if I had to watch something 57 times in a row, my head would probably be in a brick wall. Uh, but, but I'm impressed and, and blown away that, that you take time and, and you invest your years in life in the taking such care of, of the future generation. So thank you. I appreciate you and, and, and I just wanna say that for all the moms out there. Um, and for any mom who feels like she needs to be a mom and something else, if that's what you wanna do, God bless you. We, you know, we'll happily support you any way we can. Um, for, for those of you who, who just wanna be a mom and, and are feeling pressured to do other things, Tell those other people or, or the voice in your head, whatever it is, to screw, screw off. Because it's more than enough to be a mom and it's an incredible job and an incredible service to society and humanity as a whole to, to be shaping the next generation of humans. So thank you, I, I appreciate you. Um, for some reason, I think it's, it's something that isn't said enough in society. It's this lady's a mom and something else. And this one's a mom and a super businesswoman. And this one's a mom and a, a firefighter. And, God bless them for able to do so many things if it's necessary in your household or you have to. Um, but, but for those of you who, who choose to be a mom, be a mom first. Uh, Chelsea just said mom first, entrepreneur second. That's awesome. And there's nothing wrong with doing both. It's just please make sure if you have a mom in your life who feels pressured to be a mom and all these other things, please take time to tell her that you love her. Please take time to tell her that you appreciate her. Please take time to tell her that she doesn't have to do anything else except for be herself and be a great mom. Or, or just be yourself, and, and, and it's more than enough. Uh, so many people are searching for something that'll make them feel good enough, and, and you know, being a mom is more than enough. So hopefully, for whatever that's worth, send that love around to people, and, and hopefully um, spread that message to, to other moms in your life that you know. Anyways, God bless, I'll see you guys tomorrow.